Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, click that little red button below, and if you'd like to be notified of my posts first, click the little bell and it'll send you a notification as soon as I post. So, now we're hearing from the court system that uh, they have successfully um, given the adult children to financial, or to, um, um, like child protective services. So these people are going to get some help and they are going to get looked after. Um, the parents are being told that there should be no contact. The courts are going for a no contact order for minimum three years, but they're pushing for life. And who can blame them, honestly? Um, they believe that the children will become tainted if they do have contact with the, with the parents, and I believe that that would be true. And I believe that it would be um, very harmful to them to be turned over to another member of this um, uh, organization that they've, that they've become a part of. Um, let's face it, it's not godly, but whatever it is, it's, you know, it's not right. So... Let's not let these children um, become any more hurt than they already are, right? And I'm, I'm so thankful that the, uh, the state is taking control of the situation. They're now going to relook at the laws for um, homeschooling. I mean, the, you shouldn't be allowed to just sign up a homeschool, put some children in there, and never get checked on. And you don't, nobody knows what you're doing. Nobody knows what the grades are. Nobody knows what the tests are. Nobody knows who the teachers are, what they're teaching, what they're qualifications are. I mean, there's a whole list of stuff to doing a, a homeschool, in my opinion, and there should be some backup to that. There should be some verification. There should be some checking. There should be some, uh, you know, some more substance to getting homeschooled rather than just pulling your children out of a, you know, pri uh, a public school and sticking them in a home and you don't, nobody knows what's going on. So, um, definitely, uh, you know, I think it's really good that the state is going to take a look at, um, tweaking some of these laws and making them a little bit more, um, a little bit more monitored, I want to say, you know, like somebody needs to be in control of the situation in order for something like this to not ever happen again. And it like, uh, unfortunate it had to happen at all. Um, I do believe that, uh, Louise is the uh, ringleader of the situation and um, her control on everything, I think, is what really killed it. And it's unfortunate that um, something sort of snapped in her mind that made her go into control overload, honestly. But um, let's just continue to follow this story, folks. Um, we're told that the 17-year-old had an education of a grade one-year-old. Now, if these people were being checked on and tested and um, monitored in a way, uh, I don't believe that the 17-year-old would have this uh, type of education. I mean, if she's homeschooled, she should have a better education than this, right? So there's going to be a lot more coming out. They're still going through the journals as, they're, as we've heard, there's boxes and boxes of them. So, uh, yes, I will keep you folks posted, and um, I love the sounds that they're keeping the family together. I think that that's really important, especially considering the tra tra trauma they've all been through, that they stay together and they help each other. That's their emotional support network, and for that to be separated would just be so unjust. So keep watching, folks, and stay tuned. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, click that little red button below. And if you'd like to be notified of my posts first, then just click that little bell and it'll send you a notification as soon as I post. Thanks for watching, folks, and stay safe out there. Bye for now. The Turpin siblings, seven adults and six children, continue to recover in hospitals after being rescued last week from a house of horrors in Paris, California. Their parents have pleaded not guilty to multiple counts of torture, abuse, and imprisonment. David Begno has disturbing new details in the case. We did not get one phone call, nor did the police department. And we have staffs, teams of professionals that man our hotlines 24-7. Your agency handled 60,000 calls last year. Did you ever get a call about this family? Not one. How sad is that? A source close to the investigation tells CBS News all of the 13 children have diminished mental capacity. 
The 17-year-old daughter has a first grade level education. They are all extremely pale, scared, and skittish. After being freed, they specifically asked social workers if they could stay together. They didn't ask anything about their parents. And they were, according to our source, astounded that people wanted to help them. After receiving clothing, some describe being honored to finally have shoes of their own. Eventually, investigators could get a window into their world. Nearly every child kept a journal. Several boxes of them were recovered inside the home. One thing that county officials have been weighing, what happens next for the six children who are already adults over the age of 18, a legal age, and no longer minors? Given that the adult children could walk away at any moment, but have cognitive issues, are you thinking about going to a court and asking that you get custody of them? We will be seeking court authorization for the adult children as well as the minor children. And if conservatorship is necessary, that's what we will be seeking. The Corona Regional Medical Center behind me is where the adult children are being cared for, all in the same room, actually. A home has been found for the children, all of them, in the foster care system, and we're told they should be moving there within the next week or two. We also asked if any distant relative of the victims had called offering to adopt them. We were told, quote, not one. David Begno, CBS News, Corona, California. Prosecutors are now moving to legally separate David and Louise Turpin from their 13 children who were rescued from their California home. The couple has pleaded not guilty to multiple charges of torture, child abuse, and false imprisonment. Some 20 people have offered to take guardianship of the Turpin children. A family relative reported that the children's mother may have been motivated by a desire to become famous. David Begno is here with new evidence that the alleged abuse was discovered just in time. After last week's initial appearance before a judge, David and Louise Turpin are expected back in court today to face a restraining order. They're accused of abuse that lasted for years, including putting some of their 13 children in chains. With the children's expected release from the hospital this week, a source tells CBS News officials want to make sure that the children do not visit their parents in jail, fearing any conversations could taint the ongoing investigation. Luis Turpin's brother tells Inside Edition that dressing the kids alike was done partly to position the family as future reality TV stars. I believe that my sister wanted a reality show because, you know, the very last conversation that I had with her um, before all this happened, she did actually say that she feels that they would be perfect for TV at one point. I'm going to have sliding glass door lessons. Billy Lambert says Luis Turpin bragged about having more children than the star of Kate Plus Eight, which was among the hundreds of DVDs found in the family's garage. Praise be to Jesus. Another relative, Lord David's Lord. brother, Randy Turpin, Lord is Lord. president of a Christian college in Ohio, and he wrote a book about the spiritual benefits of fasting. A source close to the investigation tells CBS News, Randy told authorities in California on Tuesday that he wanted to explore the possibility of adopting the children. But before those discussions can happen, officials want to talk to him about another matter, whether he knew about the past abuse. Officials insist their top priority for the children, whose names we've learned all start with the letter J, is their ongoing well-being. Mary Parks works with the Riverside County's Department of Public Social Services. We've heard all the adult kids are together at the hospital. Why is that? Whether you're in foster care or you're available for adoption or whatever the case may be, we make every effort possible to keep those siblings together. CBS News correspondent David Begno joins us now on the set. David, uh, you've been following this story. I think a lot of people are you know, really, really concerned about what will happen with these children. They range in age. They do. So we're told that the kids will be split up. So the adults will go to one home and the younger children will go to another. Now, because prosecutors have said the adults have a dementish, a diminished mental capacity, mm -hmm. the county services went to a court and said, listen, we would like to seek conservatorship over the adults. And they got that. And so now the adults will be put into foster care where um, decisions will actually be made for them. Uh, it is somewhat being done against their will, so to speak. It took the county several days to prove to a court that based on all the analysis of the experts that they were not in a position to be able to care for themselves out in the real world. Wow. Let's talk about the parents, and I yeah. use that term in a strict legal sense. Uh, David and Louise Turpin, they're expected back in court today. They are. What's going to happen to them? 
So the county is asking that the parents never see the kids again. Um, essentially, they're concerned that the adults may at some point say, you know what, I want to go see mom and dad and go to the court and try and get a, a meeting with them, at which point the prosecutor's worried about tainting the case. And so they want the kids and the parents, uh, quite frankly and possibly, to never see each other again. This is so mind-boggling. They lived in a bunch of different states. Uh, people knew them. Some people even sort of came in contact with the children as they were growing up. Mm -hmm. Do we have any idea why they were treating their children like this? What is at the root of this sort of treatment? Not, not at all. Look, I'll tell you, we went to the jail. We tried to get an interview with the mom, and we got on the list. It looked like we were about to get in, and then they told the mom who we were, and she denied our interview. Uh, we have absolutely no motive, right? You have different relatives speculating on different right. things. Might have been this. Look, what we know, Dad had a good job, a really good job, made good money. Apparently was a pretty smart guy. Um, we reported on CBS this morning today that the family may have been on their way to move to Oklahoma. Uh, we also reported that a, one of the brothers of the parents who was arrested said maybe the mom wanted a reality show. Um, listen, we are pretty well sourced on this case in terms of the officials who are involved with direct knowledge of what's going on. But everything else is sort of just, you know, various interviews coming from other people. What has shocked so many people in this case is that the neighbors saw things that troubled them or sort of made them go, that's weird, but nobody said anything. Nobody ever called, right? Um, also, what's interesting is there was a relative who showed up at the hospital, alleging to be a relative, couldn't be proven, and showed up saying, hey, I want to talk about adopting the kids, and that person was turned away. They, they don't even know who that was. There was another snafu in the case where Riverside County apparently found a family to adopt some of the kids, but the family only spoke Spanish, not much English. And so there wasn't much vetting done there, so that family was rejected, and now a new family is being found. Wow. It's such a terrible, horrific story, and I, I'm honing in on the thing that you just said now, yeah. which is that there are people who kind of knew something was up, yeah. but never said anything. I think anything. that's part of the reason why I think it's captured the nation's attention. Not only, you know, no one wants to see children being abused, but you'd like to think that if this was happening in a, what looks like a very nice suburb, yeah. that you would know that something was wrong and that someone would jump in and help. And so you talk about some of the red flags. The neighbor saw them laying sod at 9 o'clock at night. Well, who lays sod at 9 o'clock? Well, now we know, according to the prosecutor, the family stayed up all night mm -hmm. and slept all day. So their 9 p.m. laying sod might have been for our 9 a.m. laying yeah. sod, right? So it was normal for them, but nobody said anything. And because it was a homeschool and Dad was the principal, California's system is set up as such that no homeschool inspections are done. So once he filed and said, here's the name of my school, here's how many kids go there, and it's a non-religious thing, that was it. Nobody else checked in on them. Maybe and some laws need to be tweaked well, or something. you've got a legislator in that area who's saying, listen, we, we need to change this. If, if you're going to be a homeschool, that's fine. But at some point, somebody's got to go in and see what you're doing. See what's going on. Yeah. It's a remarkable story. David, you've been on top of it from the very beginning. Thanks for stopping by. You bet. Hi everyone, I'm Yelene Quijano with an update on the California couple who stands accused of torturing their 13 children. A judge ruled they cannot have any contact with their children for at least the next three years. David and Louise Turpin are charged with multiple counts of torture, child abuse, and false imprisonment. They have pleaded not guilty. The six minors who were found shackled in the home will be split up between two foster homes. The older siblings will be transferred to an assisted living facility for adults. We're going to take a quick break. Rena Nynan will return with the rest of the day's news.